have the Harbor Freight electric pole saw. It looks like to me that the chain had slipped off, slipped off the sprocket because we started getting a lot of grass. We were cutting low to the ground and there was a lot of grass and stuff getting pulled in there. And another problem we had, the oil pump. From the first time, from the first day we got it, the oil pump for the automatic oiler was not working for the chain. So we're going to do two things. We're going to make sure that the chain isn't broke and it doesn't appear to be because I can't pull it through. And then we're going to disassemble this to see if we can get it pump working. But instead of returning this, kind of a hassle, I'm just curious that I can see if I can fix this oil pump and uh, help you people out at the same time. So let's give it a go. I'm assuming it's uh, metric and sure enough it is. Number six, I don't know, it fits and it's working. So that's what we're going with. So the first thing we're going to look at is to make sure that this chain's not broken. Obviously it's not. I don't see any damage. All right, this is what we got. Everything turns free, no damage. So the oil looks like to me it's supposed to pump out of that little hole. Oil should be pumping into that point of the bar. And I'm assuming, yeah, here's a seal on, there's a seal on the, the cover. It closes that part so oil doesn't come shooting out the other side. The first part to taking this thing, to disassembling this thing, is to get this off of here. So I'm going to get a little screwdriver and pull that clip off of there. So we'll see if we can get this apart without jabbing a screwdriver in my finger or shooting a clip into my eye. There's a snap ring that held on the, the sprocket. The snap ring came off and this sprocket should just pull right off of here. Just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Now we can get it. Look at all that crap. So we got that out now and it looks like obviously we're going to have some Phillips screws. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on. Look like Phillips. I'm not sure if it's metric Phillips or standard Phillips. But seeing it's most likely, I can almost guarantee it's made in China, it's going to be a metric Phillips. Luckily I have one right here. And I hope you people don't think I'm serious about being a metric Phillips. That would just be silly, wouldn't it? I don't know what we got going on there. Did I get everything? Okay, here we go for the unveiling. I'm feeling some stuff. There's some stuff hooked up in there, okay. Looks like the oil tube. To get this apart, you should be able to see it. There's an oil tube connecting all of this together. Yeah, we just pulled the just pulled the oil tube here. Just pulled the oil tube off of that fitting that goes to the bar. So that's where the oil is supposed to go. This is what we've got here. Obviously, this is the pole. That's the pole. There is the motor. And there's the tank. And there is the pump. So obviously, it's pumping, supposed to pump oil from the bottom of the tank through the pump and to the bar. And that just ain't happening. So there's obviously a cam or something back here that drives that pump. Let's see what the heck's going on. Or let's see what the heck is not going on. I'm just going to lift the, the arm. Oh, we got to be careful. I'm just noticing here. If we lift this motor out and lift the armature out, here's the brushes. And brushes are usually spring-loaded. Yeah, I can see the springs. If we pull this out, those brushes are going to come shooting out of there. So I'm going to attempt to pull this motor out of here to disengage it from this gear without dislodging the brushes. Let's see what happens. 
I'm just going to lift up slightly. And I don't know what's holding the drive gear in. It should be just a yeah, simple bearing. Okay, that was easy enough. The motor's in place. The brushes are in place. I just left it right out. Slick as anything. Okay, it's not cam driven, I see. It is gear driven. So the, what drives the pump is a uh, worm gear. And that worm gear drives the pump here, which really seems a bit flimsy and silly. This whole assembly right in here seems to be kind of wonky, if that's an actual term. Like there's a, a lot of play in here. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be, so you can adjust the tension on this on this gear. So maybe the gear just was not engaged while it was running, and this needs to be adjusted some. So we're going to tear this sucker apart and see what the heck is going on. Let's take this completely out of here, and it's going to make it a lot easier to work on. Take these screws out. Yet another size screw. Right there. Now I can pull this whole motor assembly out of here. How's that? Now I can figure out what the heck's going on with this. So let's move this completely out of the way. I'm gonna go outside in the sunlight and see what if I can see if I can see anything with this. Alright, here's what I determined is the pump gear is engaging but not very much and it's actually skipping every now and then. When this thing's running fast, I'm going to say the teeth are just skipping most of the time. Alright, let's pull this gear back out of here. So yeah, these teeth are just skipping across that worm gear. On the main drive gear and it looks like to me they've got too much glue or something or not enough tension on the spring but it looks like to me the glue got behind this uh, slotted joint here and is not allowing this gear to come full forward into the into the other gear into the worm gear All right, I got the pump out, so I'm going to try a couple things. It almost seems like that possibly the spring doesn't have enough tension, so I'm going to see if I can tighten that up a bit. And also, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to file out this slotted screw a little bit, this slotted hole, to allow this to get closer to the gear. But this glue just kind of permeates everything. And it's just, and that glue is actually on the end of this slotted hole. The glue on the inside of the slotted hole was not allowing, see it pivots. The pump pivots on this point right here. And that slotted hole is at a, is a stop in a sense. So I'm going to try a couple things to see if we can get some tension on here. So I may have to file this out a little bit or file down the post that it rides on or that it bumps up against to allow it to pivot just a little bit more to engage the gear. I don't know, we'll see. But then I'm also going to maybe see if I can bend this spring a bit to put a little bit more tension on this pump. So step one, let's get the glue out of here. So I am trying to cut this glue there's definitely glue inside that slotted hole and that was definitely keeping the pump from engaging all the way. So I was able to bend the spring a bit. Sorry I couldn't show you, but I was able to bend the spring a bit to put more tension onto the, the gear. And I'm all, now I'm going to take and cut out some of this slotted hole to allow it to move closer to the main gear. So I'm going to try that right now. Yeah, we got a file the side that's closest to the tube there. You see that? I might help I use the file the right way. So I'm going to file this out. 
I slotted out and took out material closest to the, the oil tube, if you can see that. I think I want a little bit more than half the thickness, but that should allow us to, to for that uh, pump, that gear to engage better into that main, that main gear. So I'll start putting it together and to see how this works. All right, here's what we've got. I've got the pump back in, and now there's plenty of tension on that, and it allows plenty of movement for that pump to engage that, that gear. There's a nice amount of tension. That wasn't there before. It was actually pretty sloppy. So I tightened up the spring, cleaned out all the glue from this hole, filed the hole bigger. Now it allows that gear to fully move to engage that, engage that main gear. So now I'm going to put this thing back together. Oh, something else. This screw right here. If you get it too tight, this isn't going to want to move. It'll bind up and just kind of sit there. So you get it just tight enough to hold it in place. And that's going to be the same for this screw too. If you get it too tight, it's not going to want to move. So these screws are just to hold this thing in place. But as for now, I'm just curious to see if this thing's going to pump oil now. So now I'm going to put it back together and I'll get back with you. Let's get the oil tank back in and that tube goes to the other end of the pump. All right, let's get the motor in place as much as we can. The biggest thing is getting the strain relief in first. Not so much worried about the motor right now, it's just getting the strain relief in place. Get the first screw started. And I can just flip that clamp around. It's really hard to see, but I'm getting the first screw in for the strain relief. Then I'll flip this clamp around. Where it goes. There we go. Looks perfect. Load the screwdriver again. Get the second screw started into the stream leaf. Both brushes seated in there now. Everything should move freely. Nothing binding up. The motor seated, making sure there's no wires pinched. Those brushes actually went in there quite easily, quite nicely. Uh, this is the biggest thing. Is gonna make sure these wires are pushed down and out of the way when we put the two halves of the case together. And now when we do this, we have to remember to hook up the oil line to here, or else we will have defeated everything we've been trying to do. So, here we're finishing up the, the last few stages of the reassembly of this uh, pole saw. But it's back together to the point where I'm going to test run it. So I'm going to put the bar and chain oil back in here and I'm going to test run. I'm not going to put it together any further than this just in case I have to tear something back apart. So I'm going to power it up. We're going to put some oil in here and I'm going to power it up and we want to see if any oil comes out of this hole. So I'm going to finish the final assembly of this and then we will have a saw ready to go. And of course the tricky part is getting the that clip on without shooting it across the room. No problem. Sharp end goes towards that way, towards the bottom. 
feed it onto the bar. Just like that. Get the cover on real fast. Okay, everything's in place. Put the bolt in. Everything runs smooth. Don't cut yourself. It's ready to go. There we have it. Now go get a cold drink. Cut a few logs. Make yourself look busy. Go in the house. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.